There are four cannabinoid compounds that are of the most interest to scientists doing medical research. Delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol, or THC, is the principal psychoactive ingredient that creates euphoria in the smoker. THC exerts a wide spectrum of biological effects by mimicking the body's own natural endocannabinoids. If you look in the, the microscope there, you'll see sort of some glistening golf ball-like structures. And um, those are the glandular trichomes in the inflorescence of the plant, which contain all the chemicals that we're interested in for making a medicine. Probably one of the most fascinating ca uh, cases is a gentleman with the glioblastoma multiforme brain tumor. Very deadly tumor. This tumor, from diagnosis, untreated, the average survival is just three months. Fully treated with radiation, surgery, and chemotherapy is about 12 months. So this gentleman is a middle-aged man who began using cannabis at the time of his diagnosis. He's been very consistent in using cannabis on a daily, multiple-time daily basis now for seven years without any signs of recurrence. Faced with this rapidly changing scenario, the Drug Enforcement Administration is trying to modify its official position to allow pharmaceutical companies to market THC without appearing to contradict all the negative information on marijuana they've been propagating for decades. All available research has concluded that marijuana is dangerous to our health. The DEA now recognizes the medical qualities of THC while trying to shift the blame for the prohibition of marijuana to the possible damage caused by the smoke. How about the pill form that's legalized already? Uh, the pill form is legal for uh, two or three things, uh, nausea and vomiting of chemotherapy, uh, AIDS wasting, and also for certain kinds of neuropathic pain. The holy grail for the pharmaceutical industry, and really for the federal government too, is to find the next billion dollar pharmaceutical, the next billion dollar drug. And the pharmaceutical industry now knows that th these drugs are going to be cannabinoids. They know that the medicinal qualities are there to cure all kinds of medical problems. But I can tell you that the whole plant is uniquely effective. I've yet to find a person in my practice who prefers the prescription pure THC over the natural plant. That just is unheard of in the patients. Cannabidiol, also known as CBD, is a non-psychoactive component of cannabis that gives the sedative effect to the high experienced. Amongst its numerous functions, CBD has been shown to have anti-inflammatory and analgesic effects. It helps fight diabetes, bacterial infections, and malignant tumors. This compound is also a nerve protectant and has well-documented antipsychotic and anxiety-reducing effects. The cannabis plant has been bred for decades to maximize the amount of THC. That gives the plant the strongest psychoactive effect for the least amount of product. Now, in doing this, we've bred the other cannabinoids out of the plant or down to minuscule amounts. And each of those cannabinoids that has been bred down to minuscule amounts has its own medicinal quality or medicinal properties. So we've lost a lot of those other properties. Myself and a, a group of doctors have been asking growers to bring back CBD into the plant because cannabidiol, along with some of these other minor cannabinoids such as cannabigerol and cannabichromine, have shown to have a lot of anti-cancer properties. Tetrahydrocannabivarin, or THCV, has been found in significant amounts mostly in South African and some Thai strains of grass. High concentrations of THCV will make the high come on quicker, but last for less time. This chemical compound may eventually prove to be a useful treatment for type 2 diabetes. THCV has been shown to have a protective, preventative effect against malignant tumors. Cannabichromine, or CBC, is a low-level cannabinoid. The little research has been done, scientists believe CBC may have an antidepressant effect, as well as the ability to reduce inflammation. 
CBC strongly inhibits tumor growth in leukemia and breast cancer.